Hello, beautiful people. It's your girl, Kira, AKA Words by Kira. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about shadow work, which is ultimately like unearthing unconscious characteristics that we have that we might have, you know, disowned because of shame or fear and really just giving ourselves that self-love and inner therapy. So I make videos about self-love and connecting with ourselves and others through interviews to hopefully lead to a more joyful life. If you like content like that, then definitely hit that bottom right subscribe button. You, 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 hit that bottom right subscribe button and join the family because I would love to have you. Okay, so let's get into it. This is shadow work, baby. This is like grown woman, grown man, grown day type of vibes, period. This is not for the fear. Well, you could be afraid. Sometimes I'm a little bit afraid. You can be afraid, it's okay. But if you push forward and you really want to get to that place of healing and like knowing your full self and loving it and accepting your full self, then this is definitely the video for you. Share it with any friends and family who you think might really benefit from this. All right, so let's get into it. Okay guys, so this is definitely a more different type of video than I've done in the past. Like, you know, a lot of times I talk about self-love, to identify your needs and try to attend to your needs, which are all super, super important and like very important traits of living a healthy and joyful lifestyle. But today I want to talk about something a little bit more different, which is doing shadow work. I just have my phone here for notes, you know, because this is also more new to me, but, um, here I'm looking on refined, refinedpros.com and it says shadow work or shadow working is the commitment to actively working on the shadow self as a form of therapy. It's a healthy way of unearthing our unconscious self and turning into those unexamined characteristics we've disowned for so long so they are no longer hidden. So there's multiple ways that you can do shadow work. You can journal, you can work with a therapist, you can do like different exercises where maybe like you look at yourself in the mirror and whatever comes up, you write it down. Different things like that are all great ways to do shadow work. So through this, you're gonna unearth a lot of like your triggers, your emotional reactions, any like shame or guilt that you might be feeling about yourself. This can really just provide like such another level of healing and really open you up to like the next phase of your life and looking at your life and yourself much more differently. Our shadow was a term that was originally used by Carl Jung and he said that it was a part of ourselves that we hide on a daily basis and or even a part of ourselves that we might not really be aware of. Okay, so let's get into some of the ways that we can confront this shadow self and do this type of these type of exercises. Okay, so these are some prompts for beginners. The first one is how do you think people see you? Hmm. How do you think people see you? Okay, so I definitely suggest you pause in the video, writing it down, writing it in your notes, or you could even like do a little audio recording of you answering the question if you don't really feel like writing or typing. So number two is nobody enjoys feeling hurt, anger, rejection, betrayal, jealousy. What is the very worst emotion to experience for you personally? Where does that come from? That's a deep one. So out of anger, rejection, betrayal, jealousy, what is the worst one for you to experience? Number three, what things make you judgmental? So think about a hypothetical situation in which you'd agree somebody could behave in a way you'd usually judge, yet be entirely innocent. Hmm. That's a deep one. Comment below if you feel comfortable sharing with me what might be some of those things. I'm really curious, because I know I struggle with being judgmental myself, so I'm definitely gonna do these prompts later myself. And maybe we'll even do like a follow-up video and discuss it more. Let's just start here. This will be the last one, number four. When is the last time you felt let down? Examine how you felt and whether it was truly rational or if you were triggered. 
Mm, so when is the last time you felt let down? These are all from refinedpros.com. They have a lot more, but I just wanted to kind of start you guys off with just four questions. And those that's like a great place to start. Okay, so outside of the journaling, another way that you can embrace like the shadow work is to notice emotional reactions. This is a really big one, like through my therapist, I was definitely noticing a lot of my emotional reactions and I have been on a journey of trying to um, self-regulate my emotions more. Like if I'm feeling sad, if I'm feeling hurt, if I'm feeling unsafe to like really look at my inner child, like little Kira and let her know I'm here. I see her, she's safe with me and that I'm here for her so that I don't have such, you know, really big emotional reactions that I later regret, you know, and that I'm able to kind of like stay in my body, ground myself and calm myself down when I'm getting upset. That's a really, really, really big one. And just figuring out, like they said, like noticing your emotional reactions. So these emotional reactions, you know, they're a reflex. They're a reflex or like a knee jerk reaction to something like, oh, Somebody said that they don't like my shirt and I'm super mad. I'm so mad they don't like my shirt. It's like, well, where is that coming from? Why am I getting so upset that they don't like my shirt? Is that triggering? Maybe a time someone said, you know, I didn't look nice or that I don't have style or something or just who knows? You know, you have to kind of go deeper to be like, well, where is this coming from? Why am I so upset? And like keep going deeper and deeper until you can try to figure out that root cause that's when you're in the big leagues of shadow work. And then as you're noticing these emotional reactions, you'll be able to notice certain patterns you have, like, oh wow, I really get upset when this stuff happens. Oh, I really get mad when these types of situations arise in my life. Ooh, I love this example. Okay, so this one, this is the last one I'm gonna do for this video. It's called Challenging Conscious Goodness. And this is basically the belief that like most people think that they're inherently good. You know, I think that I am good inherently, not perfect, but good person. And um, there are certain traits that you have that make you feel good. It's so funny. I was just talking about this with Lamar, like literally last night. But there are certain traits that make you feel good. Like, oh, I'm a good person because I, I'm, I'm, I'm clean, right? So you really pride yourself on being this neat, clean person. But you know, what if there's a day, like not all of us are always neat and clean. Like there are some times that you're gonna be, you know, a little more scattered, have more things around. So you literally are kind of rejecting that part of you that could be a little more lenient, a little bit more messier, scattered that day. And you're like hiding it from yourself. So I know that's like a small example, but it can manifest in a lot of other ways too. So like by rejecting aspects of your true personality, you know how, yes, you are mostly neat and clean, but there are certain times when you are a little messy or scattered, you're literally giving those shadow parts of you power. That's what this says. Um, it's hidden away and they challenge your more respectable traits and will continue to influence and sabotage your behavior unless you face and embrace them. Very interesting, so, so interesting. So the whole purpose of that exercise is to acknowledge all parts of you and to accept it, to make peace with it and realize like it's okay, you do not have to be perfect. That is the purpose of doing the, challenging the good conscience. So what is the purpose? What are the benefits of doing these type of things for yourself? And ultimately, I think that the benefits are true self-awareness, true self-acceptance, and really like self-compassion on a whole higher level. And that's what we're striving for. That's what I'm striving for. And I think that's ultimately such a beautiful represent representation of self-love. You know, it helps for like, for those of you who, you know, you have such like a idealized version of yourself and you're always striving for that. And when you fall short, like you're so disappointed, you're so hurt, you're so mad at yourself. I think this will be such a great method to let 
that pressure go and really get curious about exploring those different sides of who you are fully. And then for those of you who might have experienced trauma and you're still trying to heal from trauma, I think this will really give opportunities to let that shame and that um, guilt go that was maybe placed on you from the traumatic experiences. So yes, I highly, highly, highly recommend shadow work. Like I said, this is something that I am currently doing in my life. My therapist has helped me so much and now I'm also doing different things on my own. Um, I'm not perfect, I'm far from perfect. I have a lot more things that I wanna accomplish with doing this sort of stuff for myself, but I just think this is very important for us to talk about with one another in a safe space, in a safe way. So yeah, I hope you guys really like this video. I will absolutely do a follow up if you're into it. Please, like I said, subscribe. It's really important for me to help my channel. And yeah, I hope you have a beautiful rest of your morning or night, whatever time you're watching this. Okay, bye.